Ron Yance along with Greg Devilak, the head men's, well, the, the head football coach here at Case Western <laughs> Reserve University. But uh, <laughs> Coach Debs, uh, they're, they're on you and me now. They should have stayed on the, uh, who's leaving the floor right now? Yeah, so they honored all of our uh, teams that qualified for the NCAA playoffs. So Including your football team? Football, women's soccer, and men's cross country. It's great to see all those student athletes on the floor. I mean, yeah. They, they came here tonight to not only be honored, but to support the men's and women's teams. And uh, in basketball, they were thoroughly entertained in that women's game. That was just oh, a unbelievable. fantastic basketball what a, game. What a finish, and uh, just so happy for Jen and her girls. They worked so hard, and they had a tough start to the season. And uh, I think it was fifth in a row, fourth in a row, or fifth yeah, in a row? Fifth in a row. Got a, got a great win streak going. That's great. So, Coach Debs, it's, it's great to have you. Um, and it's, you know, you have built such a strong football program here in your 16 seasons as head coach. I think you guys have, have made it to the NCAA uh, playoffs at the end of the year five times five in your times. 16 years. And, right. and Case Western Reserve in football has only made it five times. Right. So they've all come under your watch, including this year. Uh, your team was 9-1 and one going into that uh, that playoff this year. So what was, what was great about your football team this year as you reflect now a couple of months removed? I tell you, we, we, we had a great start. Um, you know, as a coach, you, what we, as a staff, we, we tried to put together a plan, like what teams do we, are we going to have to beat to, to win the championship? And when we came up with four teams, Grove City, uh, W&J, Westminster, and Carnegie Mellon were the teams that we thought that we would have to beat and play well. So we structured our offense and our defense and our special teams and how to beat those teams. So three out of four of those teams we played in the first half of the season and did really well. Uh, Grove City game, you know, I think we, we won by 35 points. Wash U, or excuse me, Washington Jefferson, we um, really dominated that game um, and won 15-18 uh, and had a close one against Westminster. But we played very, very well in the first half and then had some injuries. And the second half of the season was a challenge against teams that we felt we should be beating pretty handily. We had a lot of close games. so. Um, I think we overcame a lot of adversity um, and hung in there um, to win. And, 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 you know, this was our, our first outright championship. Uh, in 2017, when we won, we went 10-0 and and shared a championship. As, I don't know if that's mathematically possible, but I didn't go to case, so I don't know. <laughs> I, I won't know either. <laughs> Math was not my forte. <laughs> Greg, what's it take to build a successful program in Division Three? Uh, from the football side? What's it take to year in, year out, be able to put yourself in a position to not only be competitive, but to win? Uh, I, I, it takes support from the top. You know, and I think the university has been very supportive of, of athletics in general and football specifically. You know, they've made a commitment when we came here in 2001, bef before that group came, uh, the head football coach was the only full-time football coach employed at the school. And so they made a commitment to hire three full-time football assistants, and that made all the difference in the world if, to compete with the, the schools that you need to compete with. Um, so it's people, um, you know, I have great assistants. Um, you know, I have people that come, I, I've been very, uh, I think, blessed to have guys that have stuck around. Derek Slesh has been here 19 years. Uh, 16 with me. Um, Warren Miller, our DC, has been here for seven. Um, you know, Ben Lally's been here for six. So uh, you see a lot in Division Three. A lot of coaches jumping around, or this is their starting point, and they move on. And I've certainly had guys that did that and have been very successful. Tom Kaufman, who was with us early in my career here, is now the DC at Kent State. Well, didn't uh, Jerry Shaplinski just... Jerry Shaplinski was with us for five years, just got named the quarterback coach with the New York Giants. The New York football yes, Giants. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> been really blessed to have some great people helping. It's not a one-man job. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and, and of course, the players. You know, just outstanding people to, to coach. Um, so smart. Um, and and they, they really like being together. And you don't have to worry about... You know the egos, and I don't have a lot of me guys. They're we guys, so it's that. That's what makes it a real pleasure to coach. You know, being around the basketball program that I have now for almost 20 years, I've I've recognized one truth. I mean, many truths, but one very simple truth is that there's a huge commitment uh, to you know practice to 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 team to it's not you're playing division three athletics and it's almost like it's a rec league it's not i mean it's not even close to that so my my question to you is is you know you're playing football at a very high level 
at an academic institution that expects, you know, great things, you know, study-wise from your students. I'm sure you're, you know, your quarterback's an engineering major and your, your center is a pre-med major. I'm just making this up, right. I'm probably pretty close. Um, how tough is it to be a D3 athlete at a school like Case Western Reserve do well in the classroom and also expect to work hard and be successful on the football field? It's tough. Um, I think the time commitment uh, that you put in with football and the, especially the engineering guys, the engineering pre-med guys, you really have to make some sacrifices. You know, you have to consciously make sacrifices. Like I, you can't go out and have a typical college weekend. Right. It's like, okay, I'm gonna study Saturday and stay in Friday or opposite. Um, and to get all the workouts in that you need to be, to be good at football, um, it is a challenge and it is a commitment by the, by the kids and they have to sacrifice some things. So as a coaching staff, we need to recruit kids that you know, want to do that, that football is important to them. It's not the number one priority, but it is a very high priority. If we can't get that, um, then probably you're not going to recruit the kid. Greg, what do you look for as you look into next fall? You know, workouts will probably have already started, at least right. in the weight room, obviously, and film study and things like that. But who do you have coming back? What do you look for, you know, in the fall of 2020? We have a great deal of our offense back. We have our quarterback, all of our running backs, uh, only one receiver graduated. We played about six. So we'll have a very experienced offensive unit. We have uh, two linemen graduating, but because of injury, we had a lot of guys start at line. We had like eight different guys. So very experienced offensive unit. Uh, we added a mid-semester transfer from Duquesne um, that is a really, really good receiver that we're excited about. So I think offensively, we think we can score a lot of points. Defensively, we graduated our entire defensive line. Um, Cam Brown has been a terror uh, for four years, and he is not going to be replaced. Um, uh, our nose has guard. Has he been the Chase Young of Division III? Uh, <laughs> he, is, he has been the Cam Brown of He's Division III. How about that? Yeah. Um, he's a very special player yep. for us, um, and I, I don't think we'll have another one like him in a while. Uh, but other, you know, productive players on the defensive lines that, you know, we had four seniors that played in a six-man rotation. So that, that's going to be difficult to replace. We have a lot of young guys that are inexperienced. Um, the other positions, all of our linebackers are back, and they are big playmakers, and we feel good about that. And we're graduating two very good defensive backs. So a little rebuilding on defense, so early in the season. Um, you know, we're, we're going to have to crank up the scoring, I think, until the guys get the experience. And got great defensive staff. I know we'll get there, but it, it might take some time with some young kids. Well, good luck to you and your staff. It, that experience, you know, staff that's been so loyal to you that you mentioned as you guys head into that fall of 2020. It'll be your 17th season as head coach, yeah. correct? 17. And how many years here at the school? It'll be my 20th. 20th. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they'll put a statue of you up someday, Greg. Ah, uh, you know what? I. Uh, it's been a pleasure. You know, both my daughters graduated from here, and I think I'd, that is what I'm the most thankful yeah. for, that my daughter's got a case education, and um, I've been able to experience the amazing student athletes, just, just not in football either, in all the sports. I work with uh, some of the teams as a strength coach, and it's just not football. It, there's amazing kids all over campus. Thanks for joining us. All right. You're welcome anytime. Thanks, Ron. All right. Appreciate it. Greg Debelak, the head football coach at Case Western Reserve University, fresh off a NCAA qualifying football season.